Are you there, Yochi? Yes, I am. I'm there, here in Hong Kong. You sound like uh, you're yeah. right here. Well, this is good. Well, this is a good, good line, I suppose, you yeah, know, compared about, to others I've been on. So About time. Uh, looks like we have a, a clear go-through here. Yeah. Uh, this is maybe as good as we've ever had. Uh, I don't know if yeah. Dana is there or not. Uh, Dana, are you there with us? Yeah, I'm here too. Good, stuff. good. Great. All right. Well, we got it all. The gang's all here. This is wonderful. Yeah, uh, different time zones, but we get together as much yeah. as we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is uh, there's a lot going on, as usual, and it's not good, and it's continuing to get worse at Fukushima. We're finding things out that are... Uh, not a great surprise. They're a very disappointing kind of a a revelation to me because, you know, you say, God, not again. But uh, Reactor 4 at Fukushima, uh, well, I'm going to have uh, Yoshi tell us a story about that, what's come out, what we are now uh, surmising. He is, He's put it together. He's he's the wizard here. And uh, the, re- the rest of the news is is not, not good. Um, the radiation levels at Fukushima underneath the destroyed plant, it's not uh, disabled, it's not uh, damaged, it's gone, have spiked 400,000% according to one test. And there may be more, they're probably testing all over, but they've admitted to that. A 400,000% spike in the amount of radioactivity under the plant. Now, what does that tell you? That tells you bad things, because under the plant is where the water passes through that goes into the Pacific Ocean. And as it passes through, it picks up radioactivity, radionuclides. And if the spike is uh, is anywhere near 400,000%, that means there's a cell of water in the ocean now that is really bad. All right, well, that's one thing. There's another report that 100% of Reactor 4's spent fuel was released into the atmosphere when the catastrophe at Fukushima Daiichi occurred. We're going to find out from uh, Yochi what that means as well, how bad that is, and the cover-up. You say, well, how could, how could all that spent fuel disappear when they were just taking it out? a couple, three months, four or five months ago, and relocating it, the, the rods, the assemblies. Well, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot going on. This is a, a very big story, and uh, let's, uh, let's hear, Yochi, where do you want to start with the, the spike? Well, well the, you... other, the other piece of bad news is, uh, you know, from veterans today, Bob Nichols, this uh, situation over the United States, maybe... My gosh, nearly every major city in the United States, thousand CPM. I know where's the uh, CPMs. Uh, yeah. The radiation count is really exponentially increasing over the United States. You know, it was bad before, but um, and this is sort of like a sleeper story. No one's paying attention, and these are apparently nobody's paying attention. I, I got yeah. Sites re- that uh, you know, every home in America nearly now is seeing massive levels. You know, uh, higher than yeah. Since uh, you know, maybe uh, four years ago. Yeah. So, and so uh, what's causing the buildup, the release, and well, we know. This yeah, is a, a, and Bob's theory is very disturbing. He feels that, and this is related to what happens with this uh, national regulatory uh, commission report from the U.S. This is from the federal government. You know, uh, uh, nuclear watchdogs are saying yeah. that all this stuff went up into the atmosphere from 25 percent of the fuel inside reactor two, 50 percent of the MOX fuel. Inside reactor three, that's you know that would be there's 90 tons of fuel in there. So we're talking about 45 tons going up in smoke into the atmosphere. Then we're talking about uh, you know hundreds of tons of uh, you know about 130 tons in um, uh, spent fuel pool reactor four going up in the air. So yeah. basically, what Bob is contending is that sort of the collapse or masses. Of radioactive material are breaking through the meso upper atmosphere and sort of coming down to earth and a lot of them are hitting different towns in the United States. We're, we're okay. being bombed basically. Essentially yeah yeah the atmosphere can't hold you know the ozone layer was burned off by Fukushima and I've warned 
I don't know how many times I said in your show, Chicken Little was right. The sky is falling down. You were the only and one. And it's falling down radioactive, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't come down, like, steadily, uh, slowly. It sort of breaks through like a meteorite, an invisible meteorite. Huge amount of it hits a large area, size of cities and counties in the U.S. Uh -huh. And so places are being bombarded, and you don't even know this is happening. You know, no, there's no, no sound. There's no light. Uh, but it's coming down and bombarding community after community. And if these 1,000 CPM readings are in the indication, you know, it, it's really it's really bombarded down, you know, you know, over the weeks, over the past few weeks and months. It's really bombarded down. Yeah, Bob's and, features, you can see Bob's features at, yeah. uh, at rents.com at the top center. Just look for them. This is week uh, 34, I think, something like that. No, no, it's more than that. Uh, since he began. Well, maybe it is 34. Uh, yeah. And you'll see, if you open it up, it is week number 34. He's been doing this 34 yeah. weeks. Look at the CPM counts for cities like Spokane, Washington, Colorado Springs, Miami, San Diego, El Paso, Bakersfield, Portland, Maine, Phoenix, Anaheim, California, Fresno, Reno. Uh, the counts per minute in these cities are extraordinary. Yeah, I, it, it is shocking. It's like, uh, yeah, it is shocking. It is uh, well, think about what's it. going on. In Miami. It's, it's coming one, up from above, yeah. 1,490 yeah. counts per minute yeah. registered in Miami. Yeah. That's 298 yeah. times normal. 1,585 in Spokane, Washington. 317 times normal. El yeah. Paso, yeah. Texas, uh, 1,387 counts per minute, 277 times normal. Bakersfield, California, 1,359 counts per minute. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, 1,323. The, the, if these are correct, and Bob's getting yeah. them apparently from the EPA, uh, this, is, this is a catastrophe even worse than we thought it was going to be. Yeah, uh, far This is not following any geographic pattern. So no, you're you're this you're is at, just like yeah, your you know, analogy. Just, uh, you're coming down from the atmosphere. Your you know, description is correct. After the other, you know, We're, we yeah, are being so, randomly bombed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is probably the worst, certainly the worst crisis the United States faces right now. And it'll be nice to see the presidential candidates mention the fact that there is a civil defense problem in the United States right now. Of a <laughs> nuclear bombardment. What, what uh, civil every defense? Every American city. Uh, yeah. What I'm just saying is, uh, you know, the United States is being bombarded, and uh, this is going to do a lot more damage than the, uh, you know, a few immigrants with Tommy guns, you know, coming into the border as bad as they are. Uh, but I think the candidates, this should become a uh, uh, issue in the presidential race. Yeah. You know, which which candidate is going to shut down the nuclear industry and bring an end to this Fukushima? You know, make Fukushima the number one. Priority. Stop this stuff with climate change for a while. But give that a Oh, rest. please. You know, that can wait. That can sit on the shelf for a while. Get down and deal with Fukushima. Fix this thing. Because the Japanese government now, now panel of experts is talking about dumping all the waste into the Pacific now, off of Japan. Okay? That's right. And they're talking about, I mean, just permanent, really permanent storage. The whole load and then and yeah. dropping, taking everything they got, pump it out of Fukushima and drop it into the Pacific, because no one is standing up to stop them. So they figure, we got away with it now. We've done all these releases. We've lied through our teeth. No one in government's challenging us. No major power is standing up. No country on the Pacific Rim is standing up. So they're going to they're gonna drop, drop everything down. And and as I've, you know, I've, I've tried to struggle to explain to people before, you, if you drop this stuff in the, in, the, in the trench, as they're planning to do, the Japan Trench, that is where magma is created. You know, this is this is going to cause like volcanic, you know, upsurges. And the Abakubo Plateau, where Fukushima is located at the right. foot of, is one of the, has the largest concentration of uranium inside of it in Japan. Huh. So, and, and and there are volcanoes there. The thing, the volcanoes explode there. Uh -huh. You know, that's it. That's basically. You know, I, I've, I've warned time and again. If they mismanage it, they could really pull the trigger which will end life on Earth. And they're getting ready to be madmen. They're getting ready to do it. I, I can't, I don't understand how these people call themselves scientists or experts. They are completely insane. It makes no sense scientifically. What I said before about putting tunnels into the 
plateau and, and then pumping the water and the nuclear ties in there for now. Yeah. As a yeah. resolution. Yeah. It's the best thing we can do. We don't want to put it anywhere near magma, nowhere near ocean currents. You know, we've got to isolate the stuff, contain it. And I've been arguing that, as you know, since the first weeks, that we have to contain this stuff. We can't release it. It's too dangerous to release. So. But it's up in the air. And now we find out, this is what, four, maybe five years, four and a half, nearly five years later, right? It's somewhere past the four and a half year mark when the National Regulatory Commission uh-huh. memos that were written a week after Fukushima that was sent to UC Berkeley were yeah. declassified, okay? Yeah. And <laughs> uh, is that enough that we, uh, the, what happened reactor three, mock fuel reactor, you know, we knew that blew up and went apart. You know, people mm-hmm. denied it, but they couldn't do it forever. But spent fuel pool reactor four was sort of the center of the world's biggest kabuki drama you've ever seen, you know? This is like, how many weeks did so many nuclear experts worry that the spent fuel, fuel, fuel reactor would go down? How long did TEPCO say there's water in there, there's, there's uh, fuel rods in there? This was a huge charade. It was empty all along. It was burned out, nothing like I think, Jeff, you were the first person to point out nothing could have survived the fire in there. Right. I think you said that in the first... I think few months. I think that's so. A, uh, yeah. A spent fuel, fuel reactor board looks like it's gone, right? I, you've said that many times. You repeated yeah. that. Yeah. I was hesitant. I went back and forth because when you have every expert, including the anti-nuclear, so-called anti-nuclear people, saying this, I backtracked it. I, I, you know, uh, the, my main source of information, if you recall, it, was a ma- well, he's a, a manager of a major construction contractor. Well, doing the decommissioning at Fukushima Number One, and he and we discussed uh, spent f- uh, fuel pool reactor four. He said the basic problem is that the building is leaning, and it's leaning toward inside its cell into the middle. And I said, how can that be? He said the floor is obviously cracked and damaged. Yeah. I said, what could crack six meters of concrete and steel? What right. what force on earth right. can do that? And he smiled at me, you know, and sort of said, obviously, use your own brain, kid, he said, right? Use your own brain. What's going to crack the concrete? Melt it down nuclear fuel, obviously. So what happened is this fire was great enough to melt down all the, oh, yeah, melt away a lot of it, just burn it off, okay? And then melt it down to the floor, crack the building, and he said the building's going to collapse. It cannot, you know, sustain the weight of a reactor. Reactor is very heavy. It's leaning over. This is impossible. Then I wrote a, uh, when, when there was video release, news release, that, you know, uh, the building was de- being demolished by these sort of huge cranes with uh, big torches on there. You know, they're, they're burning torches. Yeah. And big claws were yeah. taking the building yeah. apart. Yeah. I wrote, the whole building is basically in collapse and is being taken down. And then they came out and said, well, no, we just removed the upper floor, the outer wall and the upper floor. And all the experts went with that, and I had to backtrack, okay? I had to backtrack and say, okay, okay, if everyone says, you know, it's still there, I'll go with that. But then they said they're going to remove the fuel rods. And then what we saw, and what you spotted right away, Jeff, from the photos that came out of uh, NHK, out Mm -hmm. of Yomuri, you Mm -hmm. know, out of TEPCO, of a shiny new spent fuel reactor pool with a huge crane on top of it. Remember that? Yeah, And guys sure. working above it. Yeah. You know, this is like a spick and span brand new pool, and it's supposed to be on top of a burned out fuel pool. Blown it out. It was reported. Out, yeah. about. It was ridiculous. So I mean, ob- yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So obviously, what happened, the building did collapse. They did tear out. And the, what we couldn't figure out is what did the, how could have they gotten in there? There's all these melted down fuel rods. Well, obviously there was nothing left, as the National Regulatory Commission memo says. 100 percent of the contents of reactor four uh, spent fuel are not there anymore. They're gone. They went up in the sky, and the one thing they didn't catch was some of them went obviously down to the floor and cracked the building. Okay, so yeah. maybe 80 percent went up into the uh, uh, sky, and the rest of burned off, and the rest of it. I hit the floor and burned all the way through. So, um, it's amazing. Basically, they the tore floor. down the building. They built a dummy. They put in a fake spent fuel pool and faked 
the whole scene of the removal of 1,301 uh, uh, fuel rods. Fuel rods. This is like, okay, this is amazing. This is like the greatest act. This is like, uh, what do uh, people say about the Apollo mission to the moon? Yeah. <laughs> right? Fake? We, we okay. didn't go, yeah, so, I mean, something happened on the way to the moon. We didn't go to the moon. Hey, listen, folks, th yeah. they put a shroud around the building. You remember? Yes, yeah, they did. Yeah, they, shroud? put a, they shrouded the building. Anything could have been done at that time, yes. Because we couldn't see in. Yes. Nobody could see in. Yes. So they we built... don't know what was going on. We don't know no. how old these videos are and these photos were, right? So they built a fake, a brand new spent fuel pool, put some... Uh, yeah something that looked like fuel assemblies in it, and we're taking yeah, them out, enough. laying them on a truck, yeah. and driving them away, allegedly, yeah. and putting them in a common uh, carrying capacity spent fuel pool uh, on the property. And, and they say, well, we got 50% out, and then they say, we got 80% out, and it was yeah. all apparently just BS. Well, they were taking stuff out Jeff, of there, but it they wasn't... They had this a, early yeah. picture. Remember, Jeff, we commented on several times, several shows, that... They did a, a test run to pull out a fuel assembly. Remember yes. that? Yes, and one guy reached yeah. out and grabbed it. Yeah, there were 20 guys on the roof without safety suits. The one guy touching the fuel assembly of what's supposed to have been a, a fire there, right? He's touching the thing. Yeah. It was obviously a dummy back then, okay? It was a dummy back then, and they put another roof over the thing, and then they put the crane on. It was a total... This was a total deceit. It was, it's like one of those, you know, back in World War II, remember in England, they used to have all these dummy war f uh, airfields? Sure. Fool, yeah. The, the B-2 program. It's sort of like this. This is a total dummy they built to fool the world public. That, in fact, uh, everything's peachy keen there, you know, in Reactor 4. Don't worry about uh, the fuel rods. And everyone's worrying, you know, being mortified. If this thing tipples, tipples over, it's going to be terrible. And all that. Well, it's already done. The terrible has been done. 135 tons of nuclear fuel there. Now, I looked up the Wikipedia citation, and that completely deviates now from what we know. You know, NHK, when they still have some decent reporters there in Japan Times and yeah. others, the, their record of events, now, now, right now, if you look at Wikipedia, say everything happened on March 15th with the explosion there. That's not right. With, after the uh, Reactor 3 explosion, that is another bit of revision. I don't know how many times they re revise the story. It's been changed so many times. But what actually happened is on March 2nd, uh, the Japanese government and, and uh, well, TEPCO uh, and the Ministry of Economy ordered all the foreign nuclear workers to evacuate Fukushima number one mm -hmm. because there was a secret team from General Electric, Hitachi, inside Reactor 4 putting in a new shroud to make a MOX hmm. conversion, to convert that reactor module like Reactor 3, mm -hmm. which was a Toshiba reactor, okay? So GE Hitachi were going to make a, a convert this thing to MOX fuel. Right. They were ordered to leave because of fear of an explosion at Reactor 2, okay? On the night of the 13th, apparently, the spent fuel pool reactor started burning, and there was tape of that. NHK actually showed some tape from inside when the cameras were still operating, and the flames were about 5 meters long, 15 meters long, blue flames, shooting out at a 90-degree angle, you know, burning furiously mm -hmm. out of... Uh, spent for reactor four, which meant that already it was uh, drying out. It didn't have; it doesn't have to be entirely dry. You know, there could still be water. It's burning, and the claim has always been that it's been a hydrogen fire. Well, folks, hydrogen doesn't burn like that, no matter how much pressure you've got on it. Okay, uh, acetylene won't even burn like this. This is incredibly hot stuff. And I suggest all along this was a type of nuclear reaction, a tritium deuterium plutonium reaction going on, and sure enough, people said, well, what's plutonium doing? There were 200 rods of new type fuel rods, mock fuel, containing plutonium in there, mm -hmm. which basically could cause a fire. That fire was quelled by, you know, shooting uh, water from hoses into the reactor, but on the 15th, it started up again, okay, three days on the, so it burned, 
mm-hmm. on the uh, 13th, and on the 15th it started up again. And apparently on the 15th it completely burned down. If this, you know, uh, uh, National Regulatory Commission yeah. memo is to believe, and I don't see why it shouldn't be believed. You know, they had. Americans monitoring this thing. They had a GE crew in there that was monitoring everything, okay, was watching the cameras and all that. Yeah. And they were watching it from Fukushima number two. They were withdrawn from the other Fukushima plant where they continued to monitor. So General Electric, Kitachi, knows darn well what happened there, and so is the Department of Energy and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. That's right. And they're That's all aligned. Right. They're all supporting the lie of TEPCO, okay? And what disturbs me is not that the nuclear industry lies. What bothers me is the so-called anti-nuclear industry experts, okay, I won't lay down any names, who led us along on this wild goose chase for years, okay? They did. Years. They years. did. They sure did. Yeah. It, bo- it bothers the heck out of me that people that we acknowledge as having some credibility... We look to these people for leadership. Yes. When it's obvious... There was so much evidence, that, as you pointed out, as I pointed out, that contradicted everything, okay? That's right. And where, and where are they it, now? It was right there, right? In the photo. Everything was, it, it, it was just plain, simple deduction. You know, it, the story couldn't be what they said it was. This thing really melted, you know, burned out, melted out. You said twisted steel, right? Black. I remember you using the word term, black and twisted steel. Yes, you did. Right? Yep, melted sure. down. No, we, yeah. we, uh... <laughs> We called it, and it it's tr- tragically turned out to be exactly what you said. We were there. And well, worse than what we said. Worse, it, it far worse. worse. We expect yeah. everything 100% to go out. Now, this means that this stuff is, is uh, all around the Northern Hemisphere, and it could be falling to Earth Back in Europe, uh, the same as it is here, uh, China. We just don't know. I mean, it could have looped the planet. Uh, of the could, whole northern hemisphere, the atmosphere is gone, the stuff's crashing down. And never mind carbon dioxide now, folks. As the atmosphere goes, there's not going to be any oxygen. Earth well, will start to look like the a surface of Mars. Something similar happened to Mars. That's why Mars collapsed. It was a storm of uranium co- comets from a, a uranium star. That's what they're that saying, yeah. Mars and destroyed yeah. it. And all that uranium then came to Earth and landed here. So this wow. could be the second Mars. If this, yeah, you know, unless something is done drastically, and then no more dumping. They can't keep dumping like this. I don't know what they're going to do. I, uh, Dana, uh, we just heard what Yochi and I have been on for four and a half years, uh, warning people about the lies are monumental. We pretty well know that now, a hundred percent. The sky is falling on us, literally. If if Bob Nichols figures are correct, and I have no reason to doubt them, the whole country is being bombed with uranium cells, cells of uranium. Particles, the particles of uranium and plutonium coming down with that stuff. Right. Particleized, yeah. All right. Uh, Dana, any... any... Yeah, the Geiger counters, uh, when they register a count, when they register a count, then they can't register another count until that uh, gargo- uh, until the gas itself settles down. So they're missing a lot of counts. So the numbers you're talking about, uh, you can expect double or triple that is for real numbers. Right. But they're they're only looking for a certain type of isotope uh, with those numbers with mm-hmm. those Geiger counters. They're over two hundred. There's over two hundred, and yeah, they're looking for the cesium twins and. Uh, I guess tritium and and well a couple others. Yeah, they're but... basically beta. Well, Kirkcaldy the biggest but producer. As as this uh, as this report uh, as the similar reports that came out with this one disclosure, there was a massive amount of alpha radiation. Okay, shot that's up it. by a thousand that's times. That's bad. And that's... we don't even bother to measure that now anymore. I mean, no. you know, it's, it's bad for you, terribly yeah. bad. But we don't even bother well, with it because the resonance is so horrible. Okay, is that... a lot of people are not. Take into Dana. consideration that the tsunami, it didn't just hit Fukushima Daiichi's plant. Uh, like, it, it, So what happens is if the nuclear power plants don't get power for about 90 minutes, they start melting down. Yeah. And so when you look at the tsunami debris throughout the country, there was no power throughout all these nuclear power plants on, on the east side for several hundred miles. They all melted down. That's the reality that we're looking at. So the big hoax was uh, Fukushima, why all the other plants were melting down at the same time. That's, there's no way around that. And 
that Curian was the biggest producer, not CCM or iodine, right? And so once the rods... And another thing to take into consideration is... Are you getting all of this? I'm sorry. You're breaking right. up on the other right. end there. Yeah. Okay. And so the best thing to, the best thing to think about was that... To, to think about a nuclear power plant, and, and these reactors hold 3,450 assemblies at full peak. Now, at, on the roof, apparently, they only had 1,100 or so uh, assemblies. Each assembly has 80 rods. Each rod is around 12 feet and weighs around 18 pounds. And, and so where did all the material go from all the reactors if it wasn't in the reactors or the spent fuel pool? I don't get that because they got to stay in the spent fuel pool for up to a decade. But And there was only 9 million pounds in the common spent fuel pool for six reactors. So each of the reactors can hold 5 million pounds. And each of the fuel pools can hold a whole lot more than that. And so how is it that they say there was nothing in the reactors hardly or nothing in the fuel pools and they don't explain where it was to? let alone all the other plants that never got power. Because after 90 minutes, they'll start melting down. That's just the way it is. They lose that external power. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you're right. so this is right really there, Dana. You know, I mean, that's what I was arguing about, that uh, the beaching of those melonhead whales. The uh, research reactors right. had problems after that. There was leakages the following year, Okay. So, yeah, yeah, that would confirm everything you're saying down in Ibaraki. So the major research act reactors had major leaks the following year. So they somehow contained it by pumping water in, but it didn't stop the initial meltdown. The, you know, the core is gone. Right. Once it consumes everything. Reactor 4 was empty by March the 18th. Uh, it was all gone. That was in the emails that weren't redacted. And there were several million of them they released originally, and the majority of it was redacted. But it was pretty where, where clear did you find that those all the other Where did you find those emails that were not re redacted? I, well, no, these were redacted, but I got around two million of them. And they're at the NRC's headlight, they're the declassified uh, headlight <laughs> uh, website. Uh -huh. And they were the declassified ones. Uh -huh. I always put a link underneath my videos to all of that. Uh huh, uh huh. I'm I'm down. I'm in a hotel right now, so it's a little scratchy. That's okay. We're getting ready to go in for the third time to see the judge. Oh, God. And what, what's going on with that? I don't want to bring it up because it's such ugly news, but we need to. So it tell is us so what's it's going horrible on. news. But they got this is my third appearance now, and um, I can't give away a lot because they're following me and hunting me, and and they're predators on me. And so I don't really want to give them a heads up to what I'm up to when I get down there this time. Right. But I, I think they got their foot stuck in their mouth now and they can't get it out. Good. And um, Good. that's why we're seeing the information coming out. Have you seen all, like, all the major media is coming out and pounding nuclear in the last two weeks or a week and a half? It was surprising where normally you get maybe one story every two weeks from mainstream media where they talk a little bit of truth. That was now, odd. You've seen quite a lot of it. Where's, yeah, what's, the tie, what's the tie-in? Yeah, what is the tie-in? I think it was where they arrested me, and you guys put me up on your website and then shoved me out there relentlessly, and then the radio shows and all the other blogs. There was over 60 stories written. Your, uh, Yoshi's story that he wrote was just incredible. It really woke people up in a huge way, and I think that's what's going on, and that we, we really brought it to them, you know? They thought that no one was going to stand up, and then everybody stood up, and everybody called out. The, the PR firm themselves, right, so that right. really intimidated them. Yeah, well, they, yeah, they thought you were going to just crumble, and uh, yeah. that would be it. They wow. worked hard at it too, right? Yeah, it was a setup. Yeah, yeah. And so, well, it's good that the Canadians are waking up. I wish the rest of the world would follow suit. But well, I did read the small news item that now they're going to start exporting uranium to India, and India is huge. Yeah. Seems so obvious over there to expand. Their nuclear industry, and that well, uranium the, is going to go through the border of Vancouver. The Indians well, I mean, are neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. It's like they're they're not paying any attention to the current damage from Fukushima, past nuclear reactor, the effects on the road. They're just going to push ahead and exports. So I hope the people of Vancouver block those trucks. You know that they do something to stop this one because they can't go on. Vancouver will be the next Fukushima if this happens. Well, there's We're, an extension well, event. Gonna yeah, pop up yeah. here for these soon on that radio. Well, they just shut down uh, Indian Point, crashed. Uh, yeah, lost lost power. 
Uh, that, you think that was a nuclear meltdown? It could. It could well I think be. That's a, I think it's it's a meltdown. I've been wow. looking at this for a last couple meltdown of days. For sure, definitely, definitely. I think yeah. so. Yeah. This yeah. Is, well, then the plan. Looking that way. Yeah, that's that's north of New York, right? That's north oh of yeah, New York. I have yeah, a friend. It looks like a nice who, release, anyway. Patty Doyle, our, our monthly regular twice, lives uh, ten miles from there. Oh, and, well, yeah. If whatever reactor melted partially, it'll never go back on. Uh, that plant should have been closed twenty years ago. It's been leaking since the mid '90s, and the NRC never did anything to stop it. And now they're wanting to extend the so-called useful life of America's nuclear reactors to 80-plus years. They are completely stark raving insane. Well, there's a couple of New Yorkers over there who have a stake in it. They've got a lot of property in New York. One of them is uh, Hillary Clinton, yeah, and the other one is Donald Trump. I hope they start. None of them have really spoken up about Indian Point going down and what the results are. I hope people get some dosimeters and Geiger counters. How much have you, start. Dana? How much yeah. have you? How much? How much? I was asking Dana. How much have you learned about Indian Point, Dana? You're really sharp at looking between the lines. What What leads you to say that there's been at least a partial meltdown of one of the reactors there? How many reactors are at Indian Point? Two. Yeah, I do, I don't know. Um, well, what, what I know is what the rhetoric was. It's the same rhetoric when he rolled it to potato chips and the bananas and walking in sunshine. Yeah. And that, uh, right, when they start doing that, it's always because it's a release. And that's to mitigate anybody worrying about it. Has yeah. to be. Yeah. Cause infighting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. cause infighting. Hey, the salmon. Now, uh, apparently, uh, apparently there was some admission of a uh, critical criticality when those, a set of rods, I think three or four rods broke. And then it started a meltdown, so that's why they shut it, they shut down the plant. How far it went, we don't know. But uh, I don't think they were able to shut it down. Was the problem? Out of it. I don't because I because they lost a neutron rod inside of it. They, they lost the control the rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They lost them inside of it. They never apparently. There's no literature I can find about that happening. But uh, yeah. what it means is that that's what they do to shut down the reactor. But if you lose control of the rods and they go right. in there. Right. Then that's that's emissions, right? That's that's going up through the smokestack. That's gonna. They're not designed to do that. They're designed to slowly be inserted and take away the neutron bombardment and, and drop the temperatures and and the operating system down in increments. And when you drop it in there, <clears throat> then this stuff uh, it, it it evaporates, and it's extremely toxic stuff we're talking about. And so it looks like at least that much was released, and that is or serious. Ad- that is serious stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, here's... The speedy drop is because usually of an emergency. You know, that's sort of an automated system. They just, you know, they'll, they'll do anything just to stop the reaction. That's so right. they drop it down very speedily and they here's, can break rods. Yeah. Here's the so latest... there was an event. Something happened to yeah. trigger the rods drop. Let's see if down. we can uh, read through the lines on this. This is ABC News. Just got it 56 minutes ago. Nuclear reactor at Indian Point shuts down. A reactor at the Indian Point nuclear power plant in New York shut down Monday in the evening after an electrical disturbance on the non-nuclear side of the plant, end quote. An electrical disturbance on the non-nuclear side of the plant caused it to shut down. The company that runs the plant made that statement uh, today. The governor said that no radioactivity was released as a result of the 7 p.m. incident at the plant (laughs) about 25 miles north of New York City and said the cause was unknown. I immediately directed the Department of Public Service to commence an investigation into another unexpected incident at Indian Point, he said. In the meantime, in the statement, Entergy, which operates the plant, said that the disturbance caused the main electric generator and reactor to shut down automatically and safely as designed. It tripped. Uh, Initial reactions are that the electrical disturbance is related to a high-voltage transmission line that brings power from the plant to a switching yard. The precise cause remains under investigation. I say that's crap. I say they know exactly right. what happened there, and it's it's. They, uh, go ahead. Jeff, what, what they're like? They got three thousand watt switchers, 
is what's going on there. And I, I read through all of that. And they, they, they were trying to blame it on a faulty switcher. Uh-huh. But listen, think about how Whip happened. Whip on, uh, not last Valentine's Day, but the Valentine's Day before, the Whip uh, had a truck fire. And then a week and a half later, they had still not went back down there. And then they said now they had another accident. But no one had been down there since the truck fire. And the truck, but we're talking about yeah. a truck fire That's underground in, in a folks, place yeah. where there's yeah, fifty five there's yeah. fifty five football field size uh um caverns down there. Fifty five football field size caverns. So like if I was on a football field and there was a fire on the other end from a truck, I wouldn't be worried about it at the other end. Right, and so when you got fifty-five football fields, you're not going to be worried about a truck fire. So where do they but why close would you stay the, out of a mine? Exactly, because because the smoke all goes out the one way. You get on the other side of that, and then you put out the fire. And so once again, that's what India Point was doing. They were, they were talking about a switcher, but in reality, all the rods had fell into the reactor. Right. Yeah. So yeah, totally I don't different. see anything in that story no about fixed that. control rods. Right. Breaking or right. falling they, in? They, Nothing. They switched it over to switchers to three thousand watt switchers yeah, and how it can change. And how the diesels kick three in. Three rods were yeah. broken, so the story right. has been rewritten, yeah, you know, rescripted. They don't dare admit that well, they well, can't well, look, they, uh, yeah, yeah. the yeah. campaign going this on. Is like, this is exactly the thing that Donald Trump needs to get over to warn the American people about. Of course they're not gonna take put words in his mouth. You know, they're not gonna let this out. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, right. Stand exactly. by. We have Thank to pause for you. two minutes. Uh, we'll come right back. Uh, we, again, watching them lie. It's just sickening. Back after this. And right back to our weekly Fukushima rundown. However, tonight we're talking about Indian Point, one of the crappiest nuclear power plants on the planet, leaking again since the mid-90s, the Nuclear Regulatory Agency or Commission will not force them to stop the leak. I forget how many gallons a day it was. They just let it go. And so now we've got control rods breaking and falling in or otherwise becoming detached and falling in to the reactor. And and now they've switched their whole story around. It had nothing to do with the nuclear side of the plant. It was something to do with the electrical switching. You know, come on. These are scientists up there. They know how these plants are built. They know how they operate inside and out. They know exactly where the trouble is. They don't make mistakes like that. Uh, The the lies, and you heard Yoshi at the beginning of the program describe the lie of Reactor 4 at Fukushima Daiichi. This is is just another example. Have you heard anything about uh, the West Lake uh, nuclear dump uh, west of uh, St. Louis lately? where the underground uh, fire is burning. It was within 1,000 thousand feet of it the last time I heard. No, you heard nothing. The cover-ups are just constant. And the crazy Indians are talking to Shinzo Abe about bringing in Hitachi and GE reactors to India. We're, this planet is going to die, folks. And in my opinion, it's died before. We have lost this planet as a species and have slowly crawled back up out of the mud and the muck and done it again. The wreckage of the earth has somehow been surmounted. If you you look at this planet after a a species extinction event, uh, 10,000 years or 100,000 years later, it'll be full of life again. It'll it'll regenerate itself. It'll take time, 100,000 years. But what is that in 4.5 billion years, which is how old the planet is? It's nothing. I think that we have blown it uh, numerous times before and every time for about the same damn reason. Technology that we discover we cannot control, will not control, and use it for ill-gotten good. Nothing good comes from nuclear power. It should never have been developed at all, period. Yochi, go ahead. Well said, Jeff. Uh, I mean, this was just the, it's the craziest of all technologies. Not to say uh, we're not playing dice with all the others. You know, Dow and DuPont merging together, what a bad idea. No checks and balances there None. in the world of chemistry. None. Okay? I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the world has gone mad. The world has really gone mad. The leaders of this world keep up this charade, uh, as they did in Paris, following the massacre there. They keep up the charade that we have to worry about carbon dioxide. And to the exclusion of everything else, all the other toxic 
garbage we're dumping oh, into the environment and killing life. And they're with. talking carbon it's, dioxide, for God's sake. Yeah, I mean, see, uh, plants absorb it. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, life life uses carbon dioxide. We're the ones who are crippling life and uh, preventing living forms from uh, uh, you know, storing it, from using it. This is like so demented. Uh, what's what's going on right now? You know, they're, they're pledging billions to stop this. I, I'm not a supporter of coal at all. I sequestered more. You now, frankly, I've actually put away more carbon dioxide through charcoal buried in the soil than the whole lot of them there that went to Paris. You know, I'm sure of that. I put away a lot more. One person, they won't lift a finger. You know, this is just a dodge. It has nothing to do with anything in reality. The coal-fired plants are going to go on. They're going to continue to bemoan it. And all it is is a huge, another kabuki drama, just like this Reactor 4 drama. You know, the horses were out of the stable, and they made us believe, oh, do everything you can to not let the ponies out and keep us busy there while they're doing the seed dumping. You know, they were trying to keep people's eye on Reactor 4 while they were dumping all that wastewater, contaminated water, into the Pacific, killing the Pacific. So the whole thing is nothing but a diversionary show, and we got to stop looking at their, their little puppet there and start looking at them, who they are, and what they're really doing. Yeah, a thousand-mile-long stream in the northeast Pacific now hitting the west coast, Washington, Oregon, coming straight on, an enormous cell of death. A thousand miles mm-hmm. long. Uh, you don't hear a word about it, Dana. Nothing. No, because they know better. They, can't, they, they originally blamed it on a warm water blob, and now oh, yeah. they're emitting its radiation. And didn't they arrest me? Make me t- take down three hundred presentations, and like twenty of them were on Unit Four, where I showed dozens and dozens of pictures of the original building. And they, like Yoshi and you were saying earlier, they stripped all the building right off it. And the fuel pools were almost up to the roof. And so how could there be fuel pools there? And how come all the academics stayed silent? We know the answers, of course. But these are the people that we still try to rely upon. They never something. said a damn thing. Nothing. That's that's why they got me arrested. I'm one of, like, I'm, I get a little hot-tempered, and so they, they can't deal with that one. You guys are a bit more civilized, but nevertheless, you call them out. I happen to be too vocal, I guess, and a little too much traction, maybe. Look, the, I, I'm surprised. Hold on, hold on. I am surprised, knowing what you know and knowing what you've discovered, that they don't come to you, at least behind the curtains, and say, you know, you really did good work. Somebody's got to tell you this. You were the only one. Yeah. And I don't know how you yeah. held yourself together as long as you did without exploding. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Come on. Know. That was tough, man. That was tough. You know, 260 days on this coastline in a little dinky, pe- people will never appreciate it. You guys could, but pe- most people can never comprehend what that took uh, for everybody to make it happen and just to make it happen. And we proved it. That's definitive. We have an extinction event. And people better get their acts together and stand alongside of us in solidarity. Because if they don't, it's it's too late now, but it's still, we got to try. Yeah, we, well, we have if, to hold them accountable. If, if we yeah. actually had a government, the government would be warning people right now and trying to give them some some kind of mitigation plan. Nothing. Not a word. They're just going to no. let them die. No. Just going to let them die. We gave them all that money, all that equipment, all yeah. that authority yeah. to go do the moral and ethical thing. And when it happened... They turned their back on us. They literally, in every sense of that word, turned their back on us and vilified anybody that said different. Uh, and you guys been fighting it for four and a half years. And you must be sick as I am of it. And of course, i got to go to court in, in another day and a half. <laughs> and it's just, hey, you know, when you think about how many lawyers I went through... Right, and everybody was afraid because it was you taken on UVic Law School yeah. and the Pentagon, right? Yep. That was the only thing mm-hmm. stopping everybody. They were taking on UVic Law School. Everybody was like, oh, "You're taking on UVic Law School," yeah. And 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 why why is UVic Law School so interested in you? Why are they are they doing that to you? Like, and, and they just like, I can't help you. And I was like, "Hang on a second, they're gone." And so really, it's it's this awakening. All around, you have people who don't know nothing about Fukushima. They talk to me, like, people that are smart, and then they find out what's going on, and they, they, they throw me to the dogs again. Nobody would stand their ground, uh, and that's shocking. 
That's shocking. Like uh, Clifford Olson killed 10 people. He had lawyers lining up left, right, and center for 10 children. He killed 10 children, and he had lawyers coming out of his eardrums. I can't. I fought and fought every everything out there imaginable to get where we're to, and a lawyer can't look at that and say, "Listen, this guy truly needs somebody to help him," and instead they abandoned me. You know, that's. I I don't know what to make of society anymore. I I I fight for everybody and every creature on this planet with everything I got in my body all day long. I ignore myself to the to my own pearl, but I fight for everybody. Including them and their loved ones and their friends and families, and but well, yet I'm the villain. I'm the villain. Well, they throw it to media in Canada. You know what they're what it's they're doing people. is is uh, is shameless. Uh, it's evil. It uh, it's not going to stand because the truth is on your side. And once you get to Hope you so. get to the point in court, uh, maybe they'll drop it, and you start to call witnesses and present the data that you have. They're going to be, I think. Pretty unhappy with what they've done to themselves. Good point. Good point. Hug you, right. everybody. Hug you, Oshie and Jeff. Take care, Dana. Good luck to you in court. I hope some Thank of the justices friend. wake up that to the reality of the law. It's not there as a as a lynch mob. No, it's there to defend the sovereignty and the welfare of the people of Canada, and we support that yeah. too. You know, we're not yeah. this is not you, against Canada. This is against. The destruction of Canada. That's what we're all standing for. Whether you're a Canadian, we're not, but we do support that beautiful country and those good people up there. All so right. Thank sure you, everybody. Dana. Take care, folks. Okay. Good night. Good night, Yoshi. Uh, brilliant mm-hmm. deductive work, uh, Sherlock. Great. Uh, pretty damn yeah, obvious. It's just sad that it ends up. You know, it's just sad that it ends up like this. A total lie that leaves all of the experts silent. They they're have all silent they, now. Oh, their their mouths are glued shut, and they're not going to say anything now. No, yeah. nothing. Well, all right. I just have to say to them, go hide in a hole, and yeah. uh, you're going to regret this for the rest of your life. Because just look at what's coming down from the sky on top of you. No one is immune from this disaster. No one is safe. We all must stick together fight this thing out and find a way and don't let the nuclear industry this madman seems a lot and his lackey there obama get away with this we have to stand together you know put our disputes aside japanese americans canadians koreans chinese we've got to hold the line we must hold the line of it got to stop nuclear power we've got to stop it gotta, right. it's got to end yoshi i'll talk to you next week thank you my friend you take care very good all right, all right. All right. Okay, that's our Fukushima report. Uh, again, not good news. Uh, if you can, drop Dana Durnford, D-U-R-N-F-O-R-D, at thenuclearproctologist.org. Drop, drop him a note. Give him uh, some words of encouragement. They're trying to make him a scapegoat, an example up there, and it's, uh, it's wrong. Uh, I don't know how the man did what he did. He should be a national Canadian hero, uh, instead, they're trying to make him into some kind of a villain. No, everybody's human. Everybody has a right to get really angry sometime, and it happens, especially when you're looking at a genocidal event like this one. Okay, we'll be back tomorrow. Take care.